Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me, Umber Rays, and hopefully you're enjoying the change I've made to my microphone. Seriously. Hopefully the comments will stop now. Anyway, uh, today we're going to be talking, of course, of Nier. Now if you're wondering why I've brought up the JP side, it's because I specifically want to talk about JP and the changes that have been made to Nier on the global side, as well as just kind of, you know, talking a little bit about the impact that these units had on the JP side. Of course, Global is uh, more and more just kind of becoming a little bit diverse, and 2B and A2 are actually fairly good descriptors of that. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it and talk about it, and let's get some music going. So yes, uh, when it comes right down to it, I think Nier has been one of the banners that most people have been looking forward to coming back, or at least it feels like that, or a very vocal part of the community has been talking a lot about wanting Nier, so much so that Alum, or Gumi, Gimme, Gummy, however you want to say their name, basically kind of said a while back that Nier was essentially coming. So, now that Nier is back, what is the good things and the bad things about the banner? Well, if you're a new player to the game, if you haven't gotten it already, there's something that you should definitely consider, and that is focusing on getting yourself a copy of 9S as well as 2 or 21O. Now, 9S just has one of the best TMRs in the entire game, just for giving the potential with through an accessory to, for anyone in the game to have a chaining ability, and a really decent chaining ability too. So yes, when it comes to this, this is just an absolutely pretty much essential TMR to get because of its chaining ability. It also has some other features to it, but this chaining is just really, really important to have. Especially for new players who are looking for better chaining options, this is essentially what you are looking for. To talk about the other unit, T10, oh, I always want to call her 210 because that's what it looks like. Hey, yeah, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Is Mechanical Heart, which is a HP and Spirit Up, but really the important thing here is that it has a counter on it that can regenerate HP for every time your character is hit. Putting this on a Provoke or a Cover Tank is absolutely incredible. It is still incredible on the JP side and it will probably be continue to be incredible for a long time in the future. So yes, this TMR, these two TMRs on the base units are absolutely worth getting. Now, there was one other unit that came in this one, and that is this guy. Hmm. What do I want to say about him? He's okay. I don't think he's anything that special. Now, of course, one of the main attractors on all of these banners is the five-star units. The five-star units are usually a big deal. And taking a look at A2 and 2B, I gotta say, I really don't quite know what to think. When A2 came out on the JP side, she felt kind of cool, but was ultimately very, very behind the times. What do I mean behind the times? Well, uh, th there are a couple things that hold a lot of units back on the JP side in terms of damage dealers and uh, essentially chainers too. And that is not being able to imbue an element on yourself and also having, you know, potentially convoluted ways of doing it or just kits that don't have backloaded damage. And if you don't know what backloaded damage, basically small hit, small hit, small hit, finishing with the most of the damage that will be associated with that ability. So A2 is an interesting one to talk about because A2 is very different from the JP side from what she ended up being on the global side. And taking a look at her, the end part of her kit, her seven star, looks like she ended up getting, you know, the same abilities, but they're different too. Looking on the global side, her in her seven star kit, she gets Yora Double Slash, which is uh, basically use two of her abilities in a single turn, uh, avoid heavy attack, a six hit time or six times multiplier to one enemy, decrease attack and magic for a couple of turns. Uh, is interesting because it also chains with uh, 
mirror of equity or absolute mirror of equity so at chaining and that is you know a good chaining family to have access to on the jp side she got that in her six star kind of in a heavy attack but yeah chaining is kind of important and the debuffing on it is kind of nice in terms of preventing a lot of damage from the enemy but it also feels just okay. Anyway, her cooldowns, 5 turn cooldown, available turn 1, increase attack and defense, 250% with the caster, also increase, uh, that's for 2 turns, and then increase attack and defense 150% for 3 turns to the caster. So a kind of degrading buff. Those, I, I mean, they feel fine, they feel fine for a bursting down, but I'm not entirely sure how good A2 will be at it. Looking at A2's kit, the one of the uh, big things that I make, think makes a big difference for A2 and 2B is the fact that they can equip fixed dice, and fixed dice is still useful on the global side. It's not on the JP side because of the damage formula chain, and, well, the other thing that you have to consider is that, you know, with now that there are seven stars, their TMRs are super important to them. And their TMRs on both of these girls are weapons, and not exactly the greatest weapons either. Beast Lord only 125 attack sword, and I... Yeah, I mean, it's... Th those stats really start hurting into the true dual hand meta of just having a very low amount, and it will hurt as well into the future. Wait, uh, it doesn't... Uh... Oh, I see, I was looking at the Virtuous Contract was the other one. Yeah, 130 attack, especially when the new damage formula comes around. If you're building either of these as true dual hand, it just doesn't feel that good. Uh, looking at what else you got... Pet the Pod, which increase, er, restores some HP and MP, and some Limit Burst Gauge to the caster. Hateful Blade, which extra damage versus machines for a couple of turns, and physical damage 18 times to one enemy. Her passives, she has Berserker, which gives her some extra damage versus mechanical monsters, extra attack with a greatsword, uh, increased equipment attack of 40% when dual wielding, increased physical evasion, it's interesting that giving her her own TMR gives her dual wielding. On the JP side, I'm pretty sure they went just... Yeah, just give her extra attack for equipping her own TMR. Some physical evasion, some increased... Uh, oh, and some true dual hand too. Uh, increased attack. Wielding a single hand. Looks like she has about 250% in of true dual... Wheel, true dual hand, true... Blah, whatever. It is true dual hand. Increased attack by 30%, MP by an extra 20%, increased spirit by 40%, and some modifiers. Where on the JP side, it seemed like a lot of her stuff was, you know, modifiers as well, but a lot of her kit was kind of into increasing some for, you know, specifically increasing a lot and giving her triple cast. In this one, looks like she doesn't have triple cast. Yeah, that's interesting that they took that away from her. Well, generally what I think of A2. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. I don't know exactly how to feel about A2. She, her kit is fundamentally a fair bit different from the JP side and looking at how she was on the JP side and how long she lasted the answer was not very long maybe she will get brought back more on the JP side if a strong uh, machine enemy comes back or specifically probably the advanced version of Algerian but um, looking at, at her global kit Nothing really feels that exciting about her. As a matter of fact, I'm just not... I feel like they kind of split her between dual wield and true dual hand, and I don't think it was for the best. I mean, she has natural dual wield in her six-star kit and global, but... and I... Heck. 
Oh, I guess she did have it in JP too. I just never thought of building her that way because kind of true dual hand was the way that you want to build her. And dual wield, she won't have the enhancement to really give her the extra chaining damage. So yeah, A2, I mean, if you like these units, then you probably don't really care what I have to say, but A2 didn't last very long on the JP side. And looking at her in the global side, she feels like she'll probably be fairly strong. I mean, she gives herself a 300% attack boost on her limit burst for a couple of turns, which definitely is a thing. And she does glow red for some more turns, but yeah, I, I'm not super excited about anything in A2's global kit. Nothing really strikes me that hard. Uh, if you're a fan of her, you'll probably use her anyway, but yeah, I have to give her a big eh. Now the other unit to talk about is 2B. Now 2B on the JP side, yeah, when her 7 star kit came out, I didn't think very too well of it. And taking a look at her global side kit, I might have a little bit better recommendations for her. For one thing, uh, looks like she gets, um, you know, looking comparatively between her kit on the JP side and the global side. There are some minor differences. It's interesting that they keep the same names for the attacks, but, or mostly for the attacks, but actually change what they do. So gives her some abilities on one of her cooldown, 250% attack and defense boost for five turns to the caster, and decrease attack, defense, magic, and spirit, 70% for three turns to all enemies. And this is the interesting part. This is the interesting part between JP and Global is that they gave her some really strong debuffs. 70% on her seven turn cooldown. Now that's not really reliable at all all. Uh, she does have a 50% uh, to one enemy for three turns, which feels considerably less, but it's a four turn, uh, or on a four turn cooldown available on turn four. And it actually does have a chaining family of the Graviton Cannon, which is a chaining family that I don't think you really have too much on the global side right now, but into the future, it does become a more prominent chaining family. So it's kind of nice that she does have some chaining options. Looking at her passives, passively, Tubi has never been super interesting. Uh, looks like there is a, again, a part of the problem of both A2 and Tubi is kind of their TMR weapon. A2 on the global side feels worse just because her TMR is less powerful than what we got on the JP side. But looking at, you know, 2B until the super TMR update comes and that's 10 months into the future. I mean, by equipping 2B's own TMR, you get 100% true dual or yeah, true dual hand, which um, kind of isn't that great considering how low the attack is on her weapon and it's also not a true dual hand weapon anyway so it doesn't feel really that good she gets extra passives extra limit burst damage or uh on the jp side and here it just kind of upgrades her limit burst uh like looking at the passives on the JP side, Tubi got a way to increase the amount of limit burst damage, where here, the upgrade to her limit burst is essentially some damage mitigation, physical damage mitigation, not complete damage mitigation, and it decreases attack, defense, magic, and spirit of 74% for, for three turns to all enemies. So my general thoughts about the near banner on the global side, well, both 21.0 as well as 9S are just way too valuable to pass up. You should at least try and get one of each. I get that not everybody has a ton of resources and people are free to play, so spending on this banner may be kind of difficult, but getting a both of these units for their TMRs I think is really good. If you really, really want to go for it, I would make sure to get two 9Ss so you can get two of his TMRs even if it takes 
a long time in the future because on the JP side, we are still using that TMR to uh, support a lot of parties. Now, the only other thing to talk about is the, uh, because I don't think the four stars are really that exciting, let's talk about um, just the two five stars. Tubi looks like she got a bit of a change of function between the JP side and the global side. Now it looks like she is one of the stronger debuffers in the game. 74% on her limit burst and 70% on her cooldowns. That is interesting because she essentially can function as both doing a fair amount of damage as well as debuffing. Uh, Tubi essentially kind of reminds me of Lauren, or as I know her on the JP side, Lorraine. It's going to make some people annoyed in the comments, but okay. Anyway, uh, Lorraine, or Lauren, uh, has some really nice chaining options into her 7 star, and Tubi kind of has the same thing. She has to unlock some of her abilities, which doesn't feel, you know, super great, but they are there, and if you are going to use her, Lauren or 2B are both good options for people who are looking for a really good debuffer who don't have CG lid as well. Now, A2 on the other hand, A2's kit just doesn't feel that good, and really, I not super excited about her. She is definitely, out of the two five stars, the five star I like the most, both in terms of design and kind of character for what I did play of Nier, but on this banner, I would say this is my final advice. If you are looking for a top tier debuffer, you could do a hell of a lot worse than 2B. If you are looking for a damage dealer, Probably you can do better than A2. She just doesn't feel that great. Unless I've missed something. But honestly, fans be damned, this is my opinion. And on the JP side, none of these near units are really used right now. Uh, the other problem with just the near units is the Xenogear units. Because near units have one particularly big selling feature that I think a lot of people like to bring up constantly, which is machines. Machines, machines, machines. But if Xenogears ever does come to global, and I think there is still a good chance of it happening, the units there are considerably stronger than the near units. And the other thing about that is that they have machine killer too. So units such as Ellie or Satan or Faye are all, all feel like much better options for going against the machine route. Um, yeah, there isn't really much else to talk about other than one thing I did forget to mention during my talk about Tubi. She also has one other chaining family which is brand new to the global side, or pretty brand new to the global side, which is Stardust Ray. Stardust Ray will start to be used into the future about the time of Red 13 on the Aerith banner. So Tubi does have some chaining partners into the future. Maria from the Xenogears event for Graviton Cannon and Stardust Ray with Red 13. If you're looking for chaining partners into the future, there are options for 2B. 2B probably gets my better unit on the banner, but hey, if you like some of the units, just go for it. Best of luck to you, but um, my general feeling about the step up banner for this one is kind of a general Yeah, it still feels kind of meh, but I will leave all of the decisions up to all of you. You can all make decisions what you want to spend your resources on. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.